Did you? All right. Yes, I did push it. We are live, you guys. What is going on? Today's date is November 30th, also known as Jojo, Dallas Jackson's birthday. Happy birthday, Jojo. Our Jojo bear. Our Jojo, our baby's birthday is today. And as Carrie says, happy birthday, Jojo. So Thank you, Carrie. this is going to be a fun birthday live for the one and only Jojo. Who, Even though she's not here, but it's okay. But you went and got her cupcakes and she's celebrating with her classmates, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, it's it, as uh, first of all, hello everyone, and welcome to all those who are doing the rewatch. I've been seeing a lot of you cannot catch the live, understandably. I mean, it's eleven forty-five during the day on a Wednesday, so many of you are working. And for those of you who are catching our rewatches, re we just want to say hello to you too. Um, but one thing I just saw on the on my variety news uh, news flash was the passing of of Christine McVean from the Fleetwood Mac. From you Fleetwood just Mac. saw that, right? Just saw it as I was pushing the go button, and I guess the first thing I would want to do is just wish her and her family, um, and the Fleetwood Mac fan family fans, everyone around the world, um, condolences and love. Christine McVean McVean was an amazing amazing vocalist and a huge contributor. I was to listening to them this morning What song? on the way to school. Um, Such great music. I have an 80s playlist and they're all over it. So that's the first thing. I, I literally just happened. You guys may not have seen it. You may be learning about it sooner than later. Um, by the way, someone says, what's wrong, Francis? What's wrong? What are you pointing at, honey? Talk to me. I'm <laughs> just reading. Um, Laura says the picture is different. <laughs> What's different about the picture, Laura? It should be the same. Hmm. The only thing that could be different is that I couldn't find a hat, so you got to deal with this this mop that on the ball. Uh, on the top of my head. But um, and then Rosanna says, "Well, well, TJ's late. I was a little late, so I apologize." Um, Franny wasn't too on time either. I no, I set everything up, but no, you're right. I wasn't. Rio's homesick. Yes. So, Rio's homesick, yes. so it hasn't been the easiest with this little guy, but we're hoping he feels better soon. Raven Raven says, hi, TJ and Francis. How are you guys? I just want to say happy birthday to JoJo. I can't believe she's growing up so fast. Love y'all so much. Have a great day. Oh, she, thank you, Thank Raven. you so we much, Raven. Too. Um, she really is growing up fast, Francis. I, it's scary, actually. Excuse me. That's, Francis is wanting the controls, you guys. So uh, we don't know what's going to happen. Francis is... What are you looking for, honey? I'm just looking. You keep talking. You know how that's how you do, you know, when I'm talking. Look, she's getting uh, bold. <laughs> she's getting confident in her abilities. Nah, I wouldn't say that. I'm um, just doing my thing. But yes, it's kind of scary. JoJo turned 12 today. And um, it, it, she's growing up fast. She's, she's growing. She's my youngest daughter. And, and it's scary. She's like already becoming a young lady. She's very mature for her age. I was very similar to that. You just moved it, honey. What did you want to do, babe? I, I'm not a mind reader. I know, but. You want to select a comment? Sure. Okay. You could start it too. And then okay. it goes in a folder where we nice. always have it. But if you want, let's just let's just click it. Okay. Domingo says, hola, amigos. Como están? So go ahead, Franny. Hola, Domingo. What's going on, Domingo? Go ahead and How answer Domingo in Espanol. Hola. Como estás? That's all you got? <laughs> yeah. That's it? Um, ¿Qué tal? <laughs> Eddie says, hi, Francis and TJ. What is going on, Hey, Eddie. Eddie? Um, Jack Love also reminds us that Irene Cara uh, passed over the weekend. Yes, that is true. Yes. Um, Beautiful woman. Yes. It's just sad, you know, and it's, it's, I, I say this, especially in DDJF, that <clears throat> as we get older, we're going to lose more and more of our heroes and more and more people that we grew up with. And um, that's why I'm so happy with what we do with the DD Jackson Foundation, the Power of Love podcast, which is coming on next, you guys, at 1 p.m. So in an hour and 10 minutes. But it just talks about loss and, and how to heal from loss and how to be prepared for it. So if you have never watched one, um, maybe check it out. We don't have a guest today, but we have an interesting topic. And it'll be Taj and I talking about loss and healing and, and how to deal with it and how to get through it. So um, I think it's very important to do that. Yes, it is. Yes, um, it is. Let's see what else <clears throat> we have. Claire, go ahead, Franny. Read what Claire says. Claire says, hey, TJ and Francis just wanted to wish JoJo a big happy birthday today. Hope she is enjoying her special day. And she is. She's She picked her outfit out last night. Yeah. JoJo's cute like that. See, and, and here's the truth. I kind of forgot it was her birthday. Let me say it this way. 
I didn't forget it was a birthday. <laughs> if you say November 30th, I'm going to say JoJo's birthday. But I forgot how quickly we got to November 30th. So last night I saw her getting dressed and getting ready. And I was thinking, girl, you're 11 years old. Slow down. But now it makes sense. She was doing that in preparing for today. She can't help it. And I think it's very important as parents that we don't try to change their personality. Joe, it's I hard. can no, but I can completely relate to her because I was so mature. When I was 12, I I was probably had the mind of a 16-year-old. I was very mature. Were you Francis? Yes. And maybe it's because I had older siblings. I don't know, but she reminds me a lot of myself when I was her age. Um, you know, Francis, it's tough because I agree with you about letting kids be themselves. And if one is mature, you got you can't really <laughs> stunt that maturity. Well, you can't. You can't. But what are we supposed to do? Am I supposed to just let her wear makeup at 12? And No, no. So what do you mean by just let her do her thing? No, that's different. We have rules set in place for that. JoJo is allowed to like kind of put lip gloss on here at the house. I'm I'm okay yeah. with her putting... She doesn't wear makeup makeup, so I don't know it's why It's tricky you're that. because she's 12. And she likes to do that, and she likes to own it doing it. So it comes off even more mature than if Didi were to do it. Didi's so silly and so – what's going on? That, huh? <laughs> that it's not from a mature place. So Dino. even though she's older, it doesn't, like, give off those dad warning vibes where JoJo's, like, owning it. So oh, no, you're you're scared. See, I am. This okay. I've always said that though. I've always said I'd be more scared See, of Joe. But this is why you have to focus on the positive. Okay, this mm -hmm. is what I've been trying to tell you often lately. You have to focus on her just wanting to be independent. And I don't know if you know this, but she's always been like that, even as a child, a baby. Like um, when she was a year old, if I picked out her outfit and put her shoes on and stuff. She would say no, even though she couldn't really articulate it. She would not want to wear that. She'd go get her own stuff and put that on. Mm. If I fixed her hair the way she didn't like it, she would take it out. Mm. Like that. That's always been Joe. Yeah, that's true. But always. Still, it doesn't make it any easier, honey. I know, but you can't like suppress her personality. That's okay. important. Focus okay. on the positive. They're great kids and they're all individual and different in their own way. And I love that. Um, Laura has a question. She wants to know, have you ever checked your partner's phone behind their back? And that just doesn't mean me. Yes, I have. Oh, she didn't even hesitate. Why lie? I, I don't think I have. I think you have. I don't think I have. With you the guys, intention of finding something? Even if he I did, have. he's not going to remember. If Okay, well, if I did, it was you decades You know how ago. I know? You've made like little comments. No, I don't think I have. Uh -huh. I'm, gonna, I'm officially saying... I'm officially saying I don't think I have. If I've looked in Franny's phone, it's to find a picture that I need or I'm looking for. It's never to find something. Be care They say be careful, though, because if you're looking, you will find. Oh, that so sounds be careful. ominous. That doesn't <laughs> sound fun. Um, uh, Carol wants to know, or says you have the best podcast. I was thinking, Francis. I was too, actually. What were you thinking? I was thinking I missed the podcast. We should do that. Do you really? Yeah. When were you thinking that? Literally two days ago. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Two days ago. It was fun. I mean, I, I, that was hard for me, though, because I wasn't used to, like, just sitting there speaking into a mic. What do you? So you miss it. I right, do. Then maybe I we'll it. get it back, Carol. I remember you getting me to do it, and I was like, oh, my gosh, my voice sounds awful. It's fun. Podcasts are the best. I, I love podcasts, so that's something I, I'm da definitely down to try and, and do again. I enjoyed it. It's just life got a little busy and we need it. I think now that the kids are back in school, it's something we could do. Um, but I don't know. We'd yeah. have to figure that out. Uh, Philippa with a generous super hey, chat. Hey, Philippa. Thank you so much, Philippa. And Philippa, obviously. That is so sweet. A super member, too. That is very sweet. She says, this is for JoJo. Happy birthday, Aww, sweetheart. Philippa, thank you so much. She's going to appreciate that. That is very cool. You know what's crazy, though? Hmm. There's a high chance she is going to just save that money. Just like She's she gonna, likes to do. She saves her money. She does. Didi is at negative. Didi is at negative. <laughs> that is true. Um, Lila Le, but thank you again, Philippa. That was very sweet and generous. Very and, sweet. Um, we will definitely be telling JoJo. Uh, we'll show her this part of the live. How about that? 
Um, Lilu Lay Creator says, Hey, TJ and Francis, when do you begin the Christmas season and what Christmas songs do you listen to? Can't wait to see you in the studio, TJ. We already have our questions. Oh, nice. Love you both. So, um, yes. Okay, let's go backwards. I'm going to have my final in the studio session of the year and probably the last one of the last for the next four months, not until at least April, which is the fourth month of the year. So good five, almost half a year. <laughs> Um, coming up December, I think mm -mm. it's 10th. I haven't announced it. It's not official on my website. But again, if you subscribe to my newsletter, that's where I'm going to announce it. And the tickets will be available. Um, so yes, it's happening. It's going to be a Christmas theme one. I'll be wearing an ugly sweater. That's what they call them, right? Yeah, ugly the Christmas sweater. Ugly Christmas sweater, as will <clears> David, <throat> and, and we'll have a good time. You'll have a Christmas hat too, right? I think so. Might as well. Might as well. Um, when do we begin the Christmas season, friend? Well, we were supposed to already start it, but our house has been sick. It had I don't know, it hasn't felt like Christmas. Yeah. Like it it hasn't even felt like very festive. Even Thanksgiving. It feels <sighs> like are we in a funk? You're oh, definitely in a funk. Oh my goodness. How am I You're being definitely. accused of being a funk? Okay. First of all, let me let me unpack what's in my mind. The first thing is I got a loot in here. <laughs> Okay, and I'm so tempted to eat it, but I don't want to be rude to you guys, so I'm going to try to not eat this. The second thing is, I was letting Francis answer me. Francis is the leader when it comes to decoration and the household, okay? Let's establish that. Oh, you definitely okay, are. Okay, I'm going to remember that one, You guys. definitely are the leader when it comes to the household and the, and the decorations. I have to be honest. I haven't been in a very festive mood. Okay. And if the captain isn't in the festive <laughs> mood, it's going to be pretty hard for Choo -choo. the followers to, yeah. to to follow suit. I've actually brought some boxes, Christmas boxes, and and just laid them out in One the kitchen. One was empty, by the way. Just laid them out in the kitchen as you know kind that, of a, right? a hint, hint for Franny J. But she's not feeling it, so I just have Babe, to be patient. That's outdoor stuff. So now you, the outdoors is your, right? Your stuff. But I don't want to do outdoors because here's the problem with doing outdoors. When we pull up home, the kids are going to get excited and they're going to come inside and get discouraged because there's nothing so going on. So can you pull out the indoor decorations? Absolutely. And I'll, I could start today. All right, well, there you go. So um, I do love the way it feels. I love that. It's come, and here's the thing. Franny, <clears throat> every time she does it, she does a really good job. And then she, we end up leaving it till like the end of February, like early March. Well, we did that last year because we... We literally started like a week before Christmas. But why do we need to start a week before Christmas? Why aren't we? We don't. Okay. It, right. I, I'll, I'll take responsibility. I have not been feeling very festive, but look, I think we showed them these guys. Yeah. Well, we showed it in our members live, Hello. which was a fun one again. Look how cute um, these guys are. Dee Dee picked us out. We already gave that story about She's like, guys. we begged dad to get them. How cute are they, mom? Chewy is loving life. She's trying to get on us. Okay. Um, let's see. But yes, Lailule. So hopefully today, I'm hoping in the next couple of days. <clears throat> um, ooh, this is a good question from Carrie. Hi, TJ and Francis. Happy birthday to Jojo. How do you think she will make her mark on the world? Love you. Ooh. We love you too, that's a Carrie. Deep question, Carrie. How is she gonna make her mark on the world? I feel like Jojo is going to help children in some kind of way. She, she, again, she reminds me so much of myself when I was at a Christmas gathering or any gathering, a family gathering, I was always with the kids. I always had the little kids. Hmm. So Jojo is going to do something with kids, I think. Okay. And Bill wants to know, oh, Chew Chewy, I know, buddy. <laughs> Bill wants to know, hi, TJ and Francis. TJ, is there any plans on touring with your father and your uncles in the future? Bill, there's nothing planned. Um, that would be amazing. That would be a dream for me. I, I look up to my father cool. and uncles. Um, without them, I wouldn't be the person I am. I wouldn't be in the position I am. I wouldn't be the musician I am without them. So that would be a dream. They are my idols and, and something I would love to do. Um, it's hard to do though. You know, everyone's at different phases <clears throat> in their life with different goals. And so it's pretty hard to do, by the way, you guys, uh, Chewy loves to just bite my fingers. And why does Chewy love? I don't him? know. But because it's that's how you thing. play with him. He does not do that to me. I love it. I you don't love mind it? it. I don't mind it. Okay. I don't mind it. So, um, I just don't want my fingers in a dog's mouth. I know, but <laughs> I know it sounds bad, but it, it's really cute. It's really cute. Um, okay, let's see what else we have here. 
Uh, when are we putting up the Christmas tree? That's kind of the same question, I honestly right? feel like we could do that today. All right. So today's the answer. Hopefully by next live, it'll be up there. Um, by the way, this is going to be the last live until around then because I'm going to be out of town. Well, when do you leave? I leave Wednesday or Tuesday. Oh, yeah. You do leave a day before. Unless we want to do it on Sunday. We'll do a Christmas We live. could. Okay. We could do um, that in our pajamas. Jeannie with a super chat. Maybe we'll do that to kick off the new month, the Christmas holiday. So Jeannie with a super sticker. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeannie. Jeannie. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, Lisa says, USA has to play against my country soon for the World Cup. Franny's been into the World Cup. I have. What is it about the World Cup? I don't know. I love the competition. I love it. I love to see you know, all these different countries compete against each other. Yeah. It's great. And all of you guys are excited. Um, who's going to win, Francis? I, I hope the U.S. All right. Hope, this is going to be a friendly. They're great players. I mean, the Netherlands is really good, right? Um, are they in first place? Are the they... Netherlands is one of the better teams. Yeah. But I don't know if they're considered the best team, at least right now. They may not like to hear it, but I think France um, and Argentina – and obviously Spain. i want the u.s to win okay Chewy, obviously she always enjoying this too much okay uh genie says hello beautiful couple so glad to catch your live have you watched the netflix series from scratch it's a beautiful and sad love story i was just telling tj you know what i love about that genie is that it's a true story the scratches it's based on a true story and so i started following zoe zaldana what's her mm -hmm. name Mm -hmm. I don't There's know always, if I'm. Oh, that's that one. Yes, I was trying to tell TJ it. I don't want to have a spoiler alert, so maybe like I don't want to tell you guys. It was a beautiful, beautiful series. <laughs> it's not a show; it's a series. <laughs> this dog literally loves to bite my hands. It's if funny. none of you, if any of you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend that show. So, Jeannie's yeah. right about that. Well, she's the one where she's speaking Italian, right? Yes, and I didn't know That's that cool. she lived in Italy for eight years and that her husband's Italian. That explains a lot. And she she speaks it so well. Um, let's see. Yeah, Tracy, that's a hundred percent true. Daddy's baby girl is growing up. It's scary. Such a sweet girl. Such a I we truly got blessed with that one. Um God knew. As Philippa says, Miss Independent. Is this? Yes, this is what uh, Chewy. I'm trying to do a live. Chewy just wants to bite my fingers. <clears throat> so sweet. Um, okay, let's see what else we have, Franny. Mm, ooh, Eddie has a question. TJ, I don't know if you've already answered this question, but have you ever climbed the Eiffel Tower with your tree, your family? Francis, you can answer that. We halfway up. Halfway right? up to the second? No, we didn't go to the top. We I've been to wanting top. to go to the top. Though. To get to the top, though, you have to take the um, escalator, right? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not I think sure. So. We we did um, do a couple of the. <clears throat> I don't know how they would say. Is it the second floor? We went up there, and it was nice. And it's something that's going to be um, premiered on a vlog very soon, actually, because we vlogged it, and we vlogged Rio's reaction. You guys know how much he loves it. He was. He still is obsessed with the Eiffel Tower, and you're going to be able to see that obsession come to life very, very soon. Uh, let's see. So many great birthday wishes for, for Joe. King first says, happy birthday, Jojo. Hope you had the best birthday ever. Thank you. Jenny says, happy birthday to Jojo. Um, and Denise says, happy birthday, Jojo. Love and kisses. Very sweet. Um, Jocelyn has a question. She says, I was a teacher of the deaf and hard of hearing for years. I'm wondering what interventions you guys put in place when Rio was first diagnosed with this hearing loss, and does he still utilize any? Great question. That's a really good question. Okay, so basically what the therapist told me, obviously I think most people know that the sooner you intervene and show them, the, the, the easier it is for them. So literally, I think we started therapy with him when he was, what, two or three months old. Uh -huh. He was very little. Uh -huh. The one thing that they suggested that I really appreciate was at dinner time, instead of like facing him away from people or having him at a certain angle, they wanted us to place him to where he could see us speak. And also- Did I you do that? Yes, I did. So basically they wanted him to, you know, just in case it was more severe than they, you know, than they thought he, they wanted him to be able to read lips. 
So basically what I learned too is that Rio was scared very easily. So he didn't hear you approaching. Yeah, so he was, he was jumpy. Would, he was very jumpy. So I think that that helped a lot because when you first walked into the kitchen, it's usually where I sat all the kids. Mm. So I put him at, you know, I turned him so he could see everybody. So that was really cool. So what Rio does now is he puts his good ear to the conversation. Mm. Have you noticed that? He'll do this. I don't know if, 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 really if he didn't that. hear you the first time. The second time he's like leaning in to hear you with his good ear. So he's mm. kind of learned to navigate that on his own, which was, which is great. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think <clears throat> Jacqueline, I, we kind of took the approach where we were going to be as normal as possible to Rio, um, not give him a complex, not give him a complex, but not let anyone treat him for better or worse, any different. And um, we've kind of stuck with that. He's a very intelligent young kid. Um, they said that that would be the first thing that we'd have to watch out for, um, where most people who have profound hearing loss, they usually have to redo a grade. He's been well advanced of his grade level for quite some time. <clears throat> so I don't see that in his future. Um, and then they said that restaurants. Yes, Restaurants loud places would be would be tough for him, and he loves going. So so far, we haven't seen the traditional things, but he definitely does have um, hearing loss completely because he now talks about it. He'll he'll he he <clears throat> owns it, which is something that I like too. I you know, and we have to be careful that as they get older, they start feeling pity for themselves or feeling bad, and that's something I'm going to really try to make sure he doesn't do. Um, I want him to feel unique and special and, and okay with it. And also we, we told him that he has to take responsibility. So like if there's something loud or I noticed in New York, if there was a horn, you know, it, it hurts his ears. He's, it's very sensitive to his hearing. So basically when, that's when I noticed in New York, I said, Rio, you have to cover that one good ear. If you mm -hmm. know you're in a loud place and it's going to scare you or have a high pitch. So basically he does that on his own now. Yeah. So, so that he learned in New York because it was really, it was much louder there. And when the, uh, an ambulance <clears throat> went by or, or a police car, it's really loud there with all the buildings mm -hmm. keeping the sound in. So he really had to, to be careful. Yeah. Um, Michael Jackson has a very, Michael Jackson fan has a very important question. Do you think Die Hard is a Christmas movie or an action movie? <laughs> I love this question. It is 100% an action movie. It it's, just came out during Christmas they, all the time. That's what my argument would be. I don't remember the movie so <clears> much. I know it's Bruce Willis. I know it was huge. I don't have the best memory. It's not like one of those movies where um, I saw all three or four of them, however many there are. Um, I'm not saying it's not a good movie. I'm sure it's a great movie. But everything I know about Die Hard is it's an action movie. Jennifer wants to know, says, hey, fam, what is something that Fanny let slide that most wives wouldn't and vice versa? Love y'all. P.S. Kudos to Franny dealing with the exes. I would be blasting case of the ex song 24-7. So for those of you That's who funny. weren't privy to our members live oh, man. just on Sunday, we talked about exes and keeping things from the exes. And we really, um, I don't say I had a disagreement. but It's we, not a disagreement we were, at all. Um, talking about the roles each other have had to play when it comes to exes. We're not going to go into it here. Each other. Anyways, We're this not is a go great question, Jennifer. I wish you had a better memory, but let's answer the question, TJ. The question is, what do you let slide that most wives wouldn't? I don't know. What What do you say? You well, can answer that. I, I tolerate things. You tolerate things? Yeah. That most wives wouldn't? No chance. No chance. And this guy's like, what's the big deal? I'm a loving what, person. I want to know. What do you expect from me? What do you tolerate, honey? No. You, you don't want to talk about it? You already know I tolerate a lot. You know that. Do you not want to talk about but it? But before we were married, no, I think that, I don't think a lot of girls, a lot of women, a lot of partners mm -hmm. could have dealt with what I had to deal with. Because had I think or have? Have had to. Well, present or past? Have had to. That's present. Well, that's like more the past. Okay. 
Okay. That's more the past. That's a good thing. Okay, so you don't feel like you have to deal with it now? No, because now I tell you. Okay. Excuse me. Oh, oh okay. Knock, knock. We're not doing that today. Okay. <laughs> okay. So with that said, Franny, then uh, do you want to elaborate? Or no, I'd like to more? know if there's something you think I've had to deal with. Let me read the question. That what you, something Franny that, slide that, what's something that I let slide? No, that I let slide. Oh, you... I don't know, Franny. Of course. He doesn't so, pay attention enough, guys, anyway. I, I'm such a, a simple man. Um, Are you? I am. I think <laughs> I am. I'm your traditional, but even more yeah. understanding and more You're giving very understanding. And more, uh, and I don't put myself first. Way. I definitely don't put myself first. No, but a lot of people don't. Mm. A lot of people A lot don't. of men sometimes put themselves first. Yeah, I mean, whether they go to the bar, they get a drink. Well, I don't do that. Yeah, he's never done that. No, not even go in the bar. I'm just saying I don't put myself first that much. I've been trying to do it more because I think it's important. No, to I do think it. it's important to have a balance. I think if you want to go do something, or I'm not saying go have a drink or go to a bar. I just don't think that that's the healthiest thing anyway. But um, I do think that you should do things you love more, yeah. things that make you happy. I just am so. Um, wanting to invest in my family. I don't do that. And I don't think it's the healthiest thing to do. I think you have to put time into yourself. And as I've gotten older, I've, I've learned to respect that more because life is fragile. We don't know how much longer we have. And I don't want to be 75, 80 years old and thinking that I didn't spend enough time on things I enjoyed in life. And vice versa too, though. What do you mean? That you don't spend, I think a lot of people regret working so much and doing so much that they miss that time with their families. Oh, okay. That's not vice versa. That's just a second layer to it. I think it's the other way around. Yeah. Um, so, I, yeah, you're not going to get a straight answer from TJ on that question. Sorry, I, guys. I, I just don't know. His memory's just not there. I don't know what you, I let you get away with. I don't think this. you've had to deal with much, like, as far as, like, disrespect or anything like that for my ex. I don't, I don't think I don't, so. I don't think that way. No, you don't. I don't really care. Oh, That's hard too because to no, but he that's true. TJ's the the kind of person I think I said this story before. Um, there were guys when I worked at the gym that would ask me out because I, I had a boyfriend. I didn't have, you know, you were just my boyfriend then. And I would say, would that bother you? Are you okay with that? And he would say, if it makes you happy. That's how I felt. You you would not want me to do that. I wouldn't want you to be <laughs> intimate with anyone else. But if, if... He was totally okay with me going to lunch with another guy. I have a lot of trust in you. I have a lot of faith in you. And here's the thing. I'm such a, a happiness kind of person, Chaser. I believe we all should be happiness, that if you really want to go, you should go. I don't think that that's really how you feel. I really don't. I think you would say that just to see I what I did. I don't know. And then be upset I, I can't, later. I can't say that's not how I would feel. I want you to be happy. It's one of those things where I, I if you're happy, how can I, who loves you more than anything, not want you the happiness you possibly could okay be. let's let's slow down that's just weird that's so today if i if i was working out of the home and i was like hey this guy wants to go no no, no. See, that's me. the first problem if you say i want to go have lunch because the guy's funny or he's fun to be around granted <laughs> i don't like the way it sounds you are not telling the a truth a portion of me <laughs> not telling can justify it by saying if you want if it's going to make your life better and happier and how would that make you feel tj you would just i don't know be okay i with swear it? i don't know i don't want to find out to be honest i don't it's not something i'm wishing it's okay upon. to have emotions honey and to care it's I, that doesn't okay mean i don't i promise care. you it's I okay promise you, i still care i just believe life is short and you should be happy i don't if, think if the humans... funniest guy in the office I mean, I understand where this can go wrong. I'm not saying that. And I'm not going to be oblivious to it. But then a sad and very small, so don't say, oh, I can't believe TJ feels this way. But a very small part of me feels like if she really wants to be with someone else, then well, I want her to be with someone else. I feel that way too. So there, I like, don't think that you should ever, 
try to hold on to someone that doesn't 100% want to be with you and you only. Like, I always say that if you came to me today and was like, I fell in love, blah, 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 it would be painful, but I would want you to be happy because why would you want someone to be with you that doesn't love you wholeheartedly? Yeah, You know what I mean? Like, it just, it, it yeah. wouldn't work. I, and, it just and, wouldn't and work. And to clarify, Clary says, no, married people should not date us. I don't think. She, I agree. I agree. We, we all agree with that. Do you? Yes. I don't think you should date other people. Okay. Should you go to lunch with the. An attractive guy. It's 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 tough how you're phrasing it. If you if it's like the benefit of it is I get to be around an attractive guy, that is different. Well, than you don't know enjoying. that. If you guys both just love what was the Netflix show we were talking about or from garden, gardening, <laughs> and I have no interest in gardening, and this person's fun about gardening, I I don't can't TJ, say. I really don't think that you you. I think you're saying that because you know I would never do something like what that. What is a work husband? K <clears throat> Scorpio says, so could Franny have a work husband if she worked outside the home? What is a work husband? I've never so heard it's, that. I've heard it before. So it's um, a lot of people say work wife too. Like it's the girl at the office or the guy at the office that you, you, you're you kind of close with. Hmm. But not that that's like you're cheating or having an affair. Huh. You're just very tight. I've never heard that phrase. That's interesting. I've heard it. I have to do my research on a work husband. I don't like the terms used, but I don't know. Uh, Fatma says, if you know the attractive guy is into you, you should not go. And see, this is different. This is maybe me as a male knowing that I have control of me, whereas for females, they're put into a position. I'm still disappointed, oh. I have to say. Right. I would... The fact that he was like, yeah, if you want to, that made me feel like you didn't care. I know. That's so sad because that actually was the answer because I actually do care. He would literally say, if it makes you happy, yeah. I'm like, wake up. Is there somebody inside there? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's and it, it didn't mean, um, yeah, and storyteller says that having lunch with a colleague isn't dating or cheating it always depends on the intention i always had faith in you i never felt like you know there was many times there was also a very attractive trainer but i feel like it's because you know who i am i didn't think well if it wasn't francis that answer would be no i never that never went through my mind what went through my mind is if you really really want to then you should go no matter what the consequences are. I don't know what the consequences are. There are going to be some consequences. Well, if there's consequences, <laughs> then I guess I will just go from there. And it may not end the right way that you, but I, I don't know. I just, I don't I know. I think women. Clarissa and, agrees with you, Fran. I think women want to feel loved and feel like their, their husband or their partner that. cares and that they're a little bit jealous. I can't say that you Who, are. Who's jealous? Like, I think that women would want, to know that their husband cares, like yeah, I I didn't interpret me saying if you want to as oh yeah not I do. caring because that's not definitely wasn't was what it was. I mean, I didn't want you. It wasn't like oh she goes, this could be an out. It wasn't that. It was just I want you happy. I don't know. I just believe in happiness. I think happiness is a very important. I thing. do too, but you can't just be going to to lunch with some hot chick. Yeah. I'm, no, you just can't do that. See, Fama <laughs> says love is free. If someone is yours, no lunch can change that. Mm. But Samaria agrees with you. I totally agree with you, Francis. You don't cross. You don't open that door. You just don't open that door. All right. Sorry. Um, and Rosanna agrees. No, TJ. I truly think you should say no to this question. So that if I if you asked me and I said absolutely not, that actually makes you feel better. It makes me feel like you care. Huh. And you're not that guy that's like, I said no. So I wouldn't take it like that. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. It's interesting. Sophie has a super chat. Sophie says, from Balmy. Happy birthday, beautiful Jojo Aww, Bear. That's so sweet. We all love you. Was an absolute pleasure to meet you in Croissant Land. You're an absolute sweetheart. Also, Foofy, don't apologize for the curls ever. Love you. Thank uh, you. Sophie, thank you for doing that for Balmy. And exactly. Balmy, Jojo's going to love this so much. Um. That was very, very, very sweet of both of you, um, Bami, for the super chat and Sophie for. Well, Bami, you can't do the super chat. No, What's I going think on? not when she's in Nigeria. Oh, okay. 
Um, Francis, what is your favorite Christmas Jackson 5 song? Why do you put me on the spot like this? Do you not know any? Santa Claus coming There you go. Down. Boom. That one. Oh, I saw Mama Kissing Santa Claus. That was, I like Santa Claus. Was coming that down. a remake though? They're all, they're, I think they're all. I boys. like it when your, your uncle has the younger voice. They're That's cool. all from that same time. Okay. Uh, I think Santa Claus is coming to town. That would be my favorite Jackson That's 5 That's a very Christmas upbeat song. one. I'm going to make a playlist, actually. What's cool is I feel like the Jackson 5 Christmas songs are getting bigger and bigger. And it's really, really cool. I love it. Yeah. Uh, we have a generous super chat from Brandon Francis. Aw, Brandon. Brandon Thank says, you. hey, TJ and Francis, I'm getting a new car at the moment, and I had you guys on my mind. I can't wait to start rocking all your music inside the new ride. Love you guys. MMM, Tito's Tacos. Brandon, you are the man. <laughs> Brandon, that's um, awesome. Brandon, there's nothing like a new car. TJ doesn't care as much about mm -hmm. getting new cars. It's like, I don't know. I feel like I'm just like, I'm in bliss when I get into a new car that has the new car smell. Really? I love that smell. It is cool. It's beautiful. I think I'm such a mathematical head and such a business kind of mind that... It's cool, but the minute you drive it off the lot, the depreciation and how much value was lost. <laughs> Have some fun, honey. It. Have some fun. I'm just fun. telling you where my mind Loosen goes. Loosen up. And it's not even a big deal, but that's just the case. So, but here's the deal. Oh my goodness. I respect Franny's love for new cars that she's gotten several new cars. And I like the that she I gets that. I'm sleeping that bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> um very very cool. But Brandon, thank you again for the super chat. Very sweet. Um, you are the MMM um, maestro. So uh I appreciate that support. And um good luck with that yeah, new car. Give it a it. name. Let us know what you name enjoy it. Enjoy it. I love it. Let us know. Uh Lamont says hi King. Hey King TJ and Queen Francis. Zach Efron is cast to portray Kevin Von Eric in the upcoming movie, The Iron Claw. Whoop, whoop. That's what Francis this was saying. This guy. Uh, you question me. You're like, is that even a thing? Do they even exist? Francis, are you sure? Yeah, I never heard of them. I can't wait for this because I, it was I like Zach Efron. In my, my childhood, it was big. Francis, Thank you for that, Lamont. Thank uh, you very much. Francis, this is a big question. Do you want to read this question? Oh, while I remove my shoes. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Is that Michaela? That's Michaela. Or Michaela. 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 Hey, TJ and Francis, do you think teens should get tattoos before they're 18? For me, that is so easy. That's an easy one, right? That is a no. That's so, a... in our home, and I really think that you started this. Yep. You. Sat the kids down and you spoke to them about tattoos and that if so, basically Lexi got one without us knowing when she was 19, I think Ooh, she was in college. Lexi. She hid it from us. We had no idea. Guess who saw it? You were the first one. Was I love I? I love that you don't have a good memory. Was I really? So basically, I wish I could find that. Lexi posted a picture of her and her friend at the beach. It was a pretty far away picture, right? TJ zooms in. He's like, Francis, is that a tattoo? And it looked like it was like the bottom of her swimsuit because it was like right here. I was like, I don't know when I zoomed in and it looked like there was like wording, right? You saw it first. Needless <laughs> to say, I was heartbroken because, you know, once you get one, you get more. So basically she did that one and TJ sat her down and said, look, Lexi, the only thing that I ask is that if, you want to get more tattoos that you wait until you're 25. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She got, she went and got one on her 25th birthday. Yep. She a, did. Her second one. She waited until she was 25 to get the second one. Royal, it's going to break your heart. Mm -hmm. Doesn't shock me. Royal's trying to wait. No, he is. He says he's waiting until dad's, what did he say? Dad's, not permission. That's not what he said. He basically is trying to respect your rule of him waiting until he's 25 to see what he really wants. That, I respect that. So look, I don't, I feel like most people that get tattoos in their teens, they usually regret it. It's not your first choice. And usually you're trying to get it removed or cover it up in some kind of way. I think waiting until after you're 25, I think that that is a good rule of thumb. Yeah. I, look, I'm not, um, a ta I don't think I'll ever get a tattoo. Um, that's just me. Um, that doesn't mean I'm a, I don't like people who have tattoos by no means. Um, shoot. It seems like half 
any of my family members who are under 25, 30 have tattoos. Definitely have tattoos. My, so. my, my only request for my <clears throat> kids and for any family rulers out there is to simply wait till you're 25. At that point, your mind is in a healthier, more mature mentality, more uh, better place to not only decide if you want tattoos, but to decide what you want to get tattooed, to decide what you want it to say, to decide where you want to get your tattoo, um, and to decide the font, the size. There's so many decisions that are so impactful that I think we owe it to ourselves to wait till we're 25. Again, um, like Francis says about Royal, Royal's 23. Mm -hmm. If Royal at the day he turns 25 and said, Dad, I'm getting a tattoo, I would say, son, that is your choice. At that point, you you put in the time to make sure it's something you want. And, um, you know, I, I'll stand by it and support it. Yeah. Um, that's It's as simple as that. I, I think I grew up in a time where it wasn't as popular. So maybe my mind, maybe I'm too old fashioned. All good. Doesn't, you know. Um, any critique of that doesn't bother me, but I'm not opposed to it. Like, if you wanted to get a tattoo, I'm not going to say don't get one. I thought about it. Like, getting have a you cute really though? Little one here or something, or have behind? You? Yeah. Well, behind. But then I ear? can't tell my kids that they can't do it. Well, you can when they're all 25. Mine would be something like a Mickey Mouse or something. Or really? I would brand myself with your name. Oh, with my name? Yeah. She's lying, you guys. <laughs> She's lying. I know my Franny J. Uh, what uh, what's going on here? We have Neymar. Uh, we have. Oh, I saw Mexico scored. Is that right? Did they? Uh, World Cup is on. Um, okay. But what is Neymar out of the blue? Diana. No one asked about who's an attractive man. Did they? Neymar. Uh, she's but she's putting that out there. Yeah. She just wants everyone to know. Okay. She's putting um, that out there. Claire wants to know, Francis. What was the worst thing about being pregnant for you? For me, it was heartburn. I had it so badly. I think that it got worse as I you know, got further along. I think it was the sleep and not being able to move and sleep at night. That was the, that was the hardest part for me. You said you had a craving of Coke, Coke and pepperoni. Um, I, what was the hardest part for you? <laughs> <laughs> there was no hard. Francis. What I have to give Francis questions. She's a or prop. She's a very strong woman. And she, for me, I kind of got spoiled. She, I didn't really, experience any too much difference pregnant i i loved when franny j was pregnant it was beautiful you probably miss it because see those are the things that we take for granted and we don't realize we're we're not getting that back see jack love um says school mexico okay ah, nice is it a bit is, yeah i guess it's a possibility for them to still enter i hope i hope i hope mexico does well um yeah okay oh trixie says absolutely a christmas movie regarding Die Hard. Okay, an action movie and it takes place in Christmas time. Mm. Hmm. I definitely feel it's like it's... Uh, that movie just reminds me of my brother because every time after, you knew to just leave the room because he was about to be very aggressive with you. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Eddie says, I listen to Passion at least 15 times a day. Is this normal? Um, I don't know if it's normal, Eddie, but um, I appreciate the love. I'm happy you like it. Um, it's funny because Passion was a song that I was... Not skeptical on, but was not worried on, but didn't know how you guys would like it. And you guys love it. So I love that. That's really cool. Um, Nella says, hey, TJ and Franny, just want to say you filled my life with so much more happiness. Aww. And I learned so much from you both. I'm forever thankful for you and your beautiful family. Love always. Oh, that's so sweet. I want to know how she pronounces her name because doesn't it have an accentuation at the A? It does not. Is that dirt? No, that's, on, that's just dirt on my. That's screen. dirt on your computer. <laughs> that's dirt. I got um, wipes for the screen. He didn't use them. They're over there. Nella, that's very sweet. Thank you so much. That also brightens our day. Um. By the way, and Nella, I don't know your age, but the same advice that we gave to Mi Michaela: please wait till you're 25. That's all. That's all. I, and and. Let me, let me paraphrase this. Let me say this different. That's my advice. If your parents are suggesting, let's go at 18 and you want something, who am I to stop you guys? But if your parents and you're scared of your parents, wait till you're 25. That, yeah. that's, a, that's, a, that's a doable thing. If your parents are cool with it and, and happy for you, then do it earlier, I guess. I'm not saying I would, but if your parents are ones that may not be cool with it, just wait till you're 25. It goes like that. 
it goes faster. And then I promise you guys, and I'm hoping, no, not hoping, but if Royal does do it and he's 25, we'll go on a live and we'll talk about it. And I'll ask him, what did he want to do earlier? And where was he thinking? And and I bet you what he's thinking now is going to change by the time he's 25. I think so too. And what he chooses at 25 will more likely in, be aligned <clears throat> with what Royal is as a man for the rest of his life. Um, Sai Sai wants to know, is hearing aid an option for Rio? It is an option. The only problem was is that um, we decided not to go with the hearing aid because it didn't localize sound. So even though he, it just kind of took it from, you know, the good ear to the bad ear, right? Hmm. To the hearing aid. So we decided not to do that because it seemed pretty invasive and they were going to like put an implant back here, I believe. Yeah. A cochlear implant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically he hears very well without anything. We just have to be sure that he protects his good ear. Yeah. I, I honestly don't see any difference. Sometimes, um, you know, when he's playing soccer, sometimes if he's on one side of the field and his, his left ear is facing the opposite side of the team, you know, coaches could be yelling at him and he's not even hearing you or paying attention. Yeah, going out there. Um, so sometimes you can see the difference and we have to tell, because we usually don't tell the coaches until there's a need to. Um, don't know if that's the right thing. Francis, you kind of tell the coaches on the first I day do. of practice. I do. I absolutely do. Yeah. Because I think it's the right thing because, you know, they may think he's just being a kid that's not listening. And I don't want that. That's not Rio. That's not his personality. He's He listens pretty well. So um, is it an option? I guess it is an option, Sai Sai, but I don't really think it's in his future. I think as long as his, his good ear um, upholds, I think he, his good ear hears better than our ears, to be honest. For sure. That's why I think there's no difference. I think mm -hmm. that, that good ear is an amazing ear. And as long as he protects that, like Franny says, I don't think he's going to need any type of uh, hearing aids or anything like that. Yep. Gemma has a question. What advice do you give to dating and finding someone to single parents? This is a question Ooh. for you because this was more what you had to go through. I did. I, I The one advice I would give is to be choosy. You want to be careful who you're bringing into your kid's life. Uh, can I add to that? And I, yeah. you can shoot this down. But I feel like single parents, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like part of me feels like they may not feel like they're worthy of being choosy because they may not have. Oh, if you think that, I, I didn't think that at all. I did not think like, oh my gosh, who's going to, who's not going to love me with two kids. Look, and I told him actually in the beginning, these kids we're a full package. If there's any issues, this isn't for us. We can't, we can't do this. I think you got to be confident. I do believe that people appreciate when you're confident and to know your self-worth. So for me, that was never like, oh my gosh, who's going to love me or who's going to want to be with me? Never crossed my mind once. I was more like, well, it's more their loss. I, mm. I know that sounds like. Yeah, it, it comes off as you being very arrogant with who you are, but you weren't arrogant. You no, were just... my, kids, my kids come with me wherever I come. And if you can't accept that, then we're just not going to work. My kids came first. And I think that's important for mothers and fathers to do that because you're bringing in a new person into their life and it's going to be difficult for them. It was difficult for Sage and Lexi, even though TJ was amazing. Mm. You were like the best thing that could have happened. You know, you uh, were the I'm best. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. What did you say? <laughs> you were the best case scenario <laughs> for real. Like, I, 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 it's cool though. I'm happy you're sharing that. Be and that's why I didn't cut you off at all. I'm happy you said that because I think women need to hear that because I truly feel there are men out there that aren't intimidated by your situation, but more respectful of it. And I've never felt, um, I can't say that certain family members of mine didn't feel that way. Not that they ever said anything to me, but I'm sure with actions, especially me being young, but I've never felt intimidated by your situation. I really respected you as a person and as a mother and that was what was, as I've always said, what was very attractive to me. So I I like to say that you should always own it. Um, you should always be proud of it. You have blessing or blessings, however many kids you have. And as Franny says, it's a package thing. And any good person, good man, 
um, will respect that and appreciate your love to others. I think there's something very attractive about women for men when they truly put others first. You know, I'd much rather Frances have multiple kids and put her life into her kids than to Frances have no kids and be wearing Gucci this, Gucci that, and everything's on her. Um, to me, awful. that wasn't as attractive as someone who was a giver. And I think a lot of men who can think straight and see straight will would agree with that. So my advice, Gemma, is to be you, love your kids as I know you do, and don't be ashamed by any means about that and your responsibility to them. Any good man knows that your kids should come first for you and respect that. Know your worth. Know your worth. What I have a question. You said multiple kids. What would have been your cutoff? There wouldn't have been one. No way. If I had six kids, there's no the, way. The cutoff, the tougher thing, the tougher thing would have been if they're like different fathers. Oh, yeah. That's the whole nother thing. But if you were married and you had multiple kids, there I really don't think it's I like, know that you've been like, I, I mean, thought this is gonna be easy, but I can't do this. I think it, it gets harder if it was more than four kids. Five, it would have been like, oh my god, then I need a, a car. I need a, a tra trade in my car. Never, it's crazy because <laughs> never once did I feel like, oh my gosh, he's going to judge me or he's not going to like me. If anything, if, if, if I felt like that about anyone, I wouldn't, I honestly wouldn't be attracted to that person. If you were in some kind of way, like disappointed, I would have like cut it off immediately. And say that again. If what? So if I felt like if there was any, any hesitation in you, okay, then I would have been like, you're not. Would you have sensed that? Yes. Oh yes. What what's the kind of hesit had had you sensed that before? No, not with you. But with anyone else? No, because I didn't there wasn't enough time to What kind of you think you would have if you dated other people? If I sensed that that was an Who? issue for people, my children were an issue, they are not the person for me. Cuz that's just going to lead to more issues down the line. Yeah, like, that's I just I never Yeah, I don't know. I just never and and you knew right away when our first phone call, you knew yeah, like, yeah. and you're because when I answered, I was walking up the stairs and my kids are following behind me like a little, little yeah, group. Yeah. And then I had Savannah as well. And then a couple more kids over. So it was like a bunch of kids at my house. Yeah. You probably thought good. I was babysitting. I, I don't know what was I going just on, remember you saying, really... is that a child? And I was like, yeah, that's my daughter. And you're like, what? Yeah, your daughter and I was like, yeah. Oh, and I have a son too. I said it that fast, and I think you—I don't know if you believed me, because the first date you asked me to bring pictures of your kids. The first date. There you go. You said, "Can you please bring pictures of your kids?" I was curious. <laughs> was that shocking to you? I was like, mm, "Why would? Why does he want pictures of to see my kids?" <laughs> but okay. <laughs> really, Francis? Did you so you brought pictures? I brought pictures. Huh. Because there was no cell phones back then where you had pictures on your phone. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm sorry, you guys. I'm going through these these uh uh lie uh these comments. So I'm in and out of the conversation, but we'll come back because I'm but sure anyway, you guys are... Gemma, oh. be choosy. Oh yeah, know your worth. The right person's gonna come along. There you go. Um, Simone says, does the Tesla have a name already? Maybe I miss it. Yep. What is it, Fran? Tessie J. Tessie J. Tessie J. Um, Kingford said, I was having a bad day until you guys went live. Much love to you Aww, both always. Kingford, I that's so that, cool. I love that, Kingford. Thank you I'll for that. I'll tell you what. This That is one of the best compliments for us because we really, and I was actually thinking about that before we went live. Like I was wanting to address you guys, <clears throat> um, the community out there, about staying strong, how life is tough, how, um, you know, we're all going through some type of something, um, likely, and that nothing is ever, you know, perfect. And, you know, this just trying to be sympathetic to what people could be going through. And I chose not to because I truly feel what makes these lives as enjoyable for all of us, even us, is that it's just fun, light and positivity. And, um, I'm not saying realness and, and tough times aren't real or, or shouldn't be they given are. any attention, yeah. but I feel our society gives enough attention to, to tough times and, and struggle. So 
if this is the outlet that it makes people just forget about something and have fun, then so be it. That's what I want this to be in it as I, as it, I feel it should be. So I appreciate the comment, uh, Kingford. It means a lot to it us. It really does. It really does. Um, Michael Jackson fan wants to know, TJ and Franny, what's the most recent book you guys have read? So I'm currently reading um, Human um, Laws of Human Nature. I'm reading Sapien, which Franny just... Um, I just got that book. From... Do you want to bring Sapien? Go get Sapien, sure. Franny. It's right over there. I saw a, a, a question that's pretty interesting. Oh, is that the one you just stopped on? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Well, Franny wants me to... Here we go with another interesting topic. But here's Sapiens. Yeah. Um, great book. Um, that is I'm very start interesting. Reading that. That's all I'm going to say. There's a series of these, right? There is. It's right there. You want to get the series? Get the one moment. Yeah, get the series. I have to step over the dog. So I usually read on a Kindle, you guys. But every now and then, if there's a book that's interesting, I like to get it on a paperback. And this one was probably on sale, so I, like I just grabbed it. it at the bookstore. I actually like to hold, but the it's book. a part of a set. And um, I like to hold Sapiens, it. Homo do. And 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. Is that Deuce or do? I think it's do. I don't know. Um, interesting and provocative. It gives you a sense of perspective of how briefly we've been on this earth. That's from Barack Obama regarding sapiens. Mm. Chris Evans, not your Avenger, um, <laughs> your BBC Radio 2 guy says, draw dropping from the wor first word to the last. It may be the best book I've ever read. Ooh, I can't I'm wait. I'm telling you guys, it's really don't good. Don't put it back in there because I'm. this is Ooh. the one I'm going to read. Ooh, ooh, okay. Fire gave us power. Farming made us hungry for more. Money gave us purpose. Science made us deadly. Ooh. All right, now I think I've gotten everyone wanting to read it. It's a, it's a good book. I, I Like I said, I'm only 50 pages in, maybe a bit more, maybe 75, but it's, it's interesting. It. You probably can, honey. You probably can. Um, Brent to Mania, 89. Um, that's a cool name yeah, with the super it chat. Says hello from Brian, Ohio. Big fan of you guys. First time I heard Jackson Five, I became a fan of nothing but the best for you guys. Very oh, cool. That's cool. Thank um, you for that. And Brian. I love hearing this because um, I'm learning, and I guess I was always told this by my family, but I'm learning the power and and a amazing feature that is music that it can live on forever. You know, there's people that are really just discovering. Whether it's myself, whether it's the Jacksons, whether it's the Jackson Five, um, any of us really today, right now. And there's something really cool and powerful about that. And what I love about it is oftentimes people are showing someone else the music and they're doing it with love and, and happiness. And to be part of that equation is um, very okay. fulfilling and very cool. So Brent Mania, Brent, uh, Brian, I should say. Oh, you're from Bryan, Ohio, I guess. Ah. Um, but anyways, just thank you for the comment in the super chat. Very, very sweet That's thing to cool. share. Melanine says, I just turned 28 yesterday. I have none. Wow. Well, happy birthday. That's impressive. Yeah. Um, 28. That's a good year. That's a fantastic year. It's a good age. Fatma wants to know, hi, TJ and Franny J. Do you watch Manifest on Netflix or are you watching another series on Netflix? I am currently watching Manifest. The thing is, is that I've been binge watching it and it's kind of the same story over and over and over. So I kind of took a break. Um, I just started watching it again today, um, but I'm on season two. Um, I'm smiling, you guys, not because of what Francis said, but I'm going back to Michaela's question about getting a tattoo. And I'm just now catching up to some great comments that I want to share. Clarice says, my daughter got one at 18 and mm -hmm. hates it. Um, Carol, with some good advice, says, can they fake a tattoo? I have. Uh, you have? Yeah. When? When I was probably, no, I was probably 18. How do you fake a tattoo? I put a, uh, what? Are the, it's a fake tattoo. It was like a, as of a heart because my mom never wanted us to get them. Okay. So I, I literally had two kids and was married. And I went in there and I was like, mom, I got to show you something, but don't be mad at me. And I opened it and it was like a heart right here like on my chest on your breast yeah not your chest on my breast because mm -hmm. i wanted to really freak her out and she's like what the hell did you do <laughs> and then she started to like go chase me go after me. i was like mom 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 wait 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 it's fake it's not, it's real. not real it's not even real she keeps calling honey so you may want to answer that does she okay this is dd guys um 
Tell her to be quick because I want to actually We're highlight this. What's up, my love? I did, baby. I turned it off this morning. Okay, um, love you. Okay. Okay, hold okay, on, hold so on. Simone says, hold on. Say that again, Didi. Hi, guys. She said, tell everyone I say hi. All I right. Love them. They can't say hi back, but I'm okay. sure they're saying hi, Didi. <laughs> <I forgot. laughs> There's my Didi. Bye. Love you, Didi. Love Dito. you, Didi. Bye. Bye. Love you. Her um, time limit. She says it's... Okay. We put time limits on their phone. <laughs> During school? Absolutely. Um, Simone says I was 13 when I got my first piercing, got my first tattoo when I was 30. Okay. Um, this is, this is the one I wanted to, uh, Nick's hockey mom says I got my first tattoo at 50 years old. So it's not out of the question for me. And my only tattoo. Yeah. I think that, I think that's great. I really do. I think that Tina, I think that's. I'm thinking after all my kids are 25, maybe I, I do it. Would you ever do one with me ever? Uh, Come on, TJ. Ever is a strong way to say no, but. I just that would be so cool. I just I don't know. Uh Clarice says I'm too indecisive to get one. Carrie wants to know what was my reaction to Prince Paris and Prince's getting tattoos. I, I've always known they wanted to get tattoos from a younger age. Um I, my job and my goal and my attempt was just to have them wait as long as possible. Um, you know, um they got theirs when they got theirs. Um but I wish they would have waited. Uh, again, I'm not opposed to them if that's what they want to do. It's their life. It's their body. But I, same thing. I just think when you're 25, at least, is when your mind's at a more mature and you're less likely to regret something you did at 18. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to tell an 18-year-old that there's a chance. I mean, you could tell them, but they're not going to listen. Um, and that's another thing. Anyone out there, whether you're 18, 20, 23, 25, 30, 35, don't ever have an, too much of an ego to not listen to your elders. And this isn't directed to them. I should have taken this off. So I am going to take this off. That's for all of us. Um, even at our, our even age. Even at our age. If, yeah. a 70, if my father, who is high 60s, says something um, that with, with, com with conviction and, and belief, I, at the tender age of... I am at, which is 40 something, 44, I think, mm -hmm. right? Um, I truly believe it's in my best interest to really listen hard and to really try to believe and follow what they say. I know he loves me. I know he's been around this earth much longer than me. He's experienced a lot more. And for him to say something to me requires a lot of, especially my father, requires a lot of, of um, guts to do. Yeah. It's hard for him to interfere with my life. So for all those reasons, Do you I should like really you ever had to. Uh, really, the, the closest one was probably when we were either moving or when we first got together. And it wasn't like a sit down talk. I can remember, but you just want to make sure I was understandable. He didn't persuade you, but he wanted no. you to know that you're too young to understand. And I get yeah. that. I get that. You're too understand. You're too. You were too young to understand all the responsibility that comes along with a woman and two children. Absolutely. And I respect that, so it didn't upset me or anything like that because I feel like you should have that. If that happened with Royal, I would sit him down and let him know, like, look, be sure that you're ready for this. Yeah. And I would yeah. come at it from a different angle though, because there's children involved. Mm. Because if he's going to be in and out, that's not fair to the kids. Uh, Simmer says. I believe someone tattooed Elon Musk on their forehead. And this is this is what I mean. I, I mean, maybe I don't know the age of this person, but that's probably not going to age so well. Um, and again, some uh, another reason why you should be waiting till at least 25 to do it. Blue Rose uh, Top, who's a super member, chimes in saying, in my opinion, the same 25 rule should be for getting married. I think for the same reason, you need to be mature and decide if that person is good for you. It decides the rest of your life. Okay. Completely agree. I agree with that. I agree with that. And, and there's so many I things. I think, though, some people, um, young, younger in some religions, you know, they're, they're trying to save themselves for marriage. Mm -hmm. So a lot of young people, it's hard for them to wait. Mm -hmm. because they're so anxious, mm -hmm. you know, 
But I do. I think that's a great rule. Well, and here's the thing, you guys. Some 25-year-olds, they obviously need some more maturing to do. So maybe 28 for them and vice versa. There may be some um, that are in their 20s that that feel very confident with who they are and, and were accurate in that assumption. So I don't want it to come off as if you were 20-something early 20s. How dare you? I don't want that at all. It's all your lives. It's your thing. Just as a general rule, I feel, especially in Western, or I'm saying Southern California, I think there's such a, a an appeal to, to gel in with what is currently cool. Um, and um, I think it can get you in trouble. That's all. I don't want to say trouble, but you guys get what I'm saying. Um, look at Laura. This is the one tattoo that is okay, by the way. She says, I did your signature as a tattoo. I will never regret it. That's okay. That can be done. Well, at she didn't any say age. never. Oh, she forgot. To <laughs> uh, I'm just playing. Laura, first just of all. Just kidding, Laura. Um, That's sweet. That is very I think sweet it's of cute. you. And um, I do hope you're still 25. My role still applies to this, but that's Laura, very sweet. how old are you, Laura? Laura's older than 25, but. You get the message. That's sweet. That though. is very sweet. Jocelyn says, I got my first tattoo when I was 20 and I haven't stopped. I'm 42 and I'm finishing up a half sleeve on my left arm forearm. I feel that's another thing. For those who want like sleeves and want to go in deep, it's probably not as big of a deal because they have so many tattoos that that first one isn't as significant. Yeah. When you have one tattoo. It just kind of meshes in with the rest. When you have one tattoo, it's significant because that's the only tattoo you have. But if you literally have 30 to 40, one out of 30 isn't as big of a deal. So um, I don't want to say, but if if you're one who knows you're going to have a sleeve and all that, then maybe 21 is the answer or 20. I don't know. Um, Emery says, my mom only allows me to get cultural tattoos, nothing else. Okay. okay. See, everyone's different. Everyone is different. Um, Velvet says, I got a tattoo when I was 24, about a month or two before my 25th birthday. And a little while later, I regretted it so much. I ended up covering it up a few years ago. Well, um, I thank you for sharing that, Velvet, because someone needs to hear that. This yeah. is When you're doing a tattoo, it should be something you do not regret. So make sure this is a long-term decision and make sure it's something you definitely, definitely want. Yep. Um, D's Tiny Kitchen says, hey, TJ and Franny, have you ever roller skated before? I just got so much love to you both, Dennis and Sandy. Also, happy birthday to JoJo. Thank you. Denise. Denise? Dennis. Dennis. Dennis, Dennis and Sandy. Yes. Um, Have you roller skated? Yeah, you have. I'm not good at roller skating. No, it's pretty funny. That, I'm not in Texas, that's skating. what we used to do every Friday, so I'm a pretty good roller skater. Um, It was just what we did every Friday, sometimes Saturdays. Um, and then when I first met TJ, we would always do um, the kids' birthdays at the roller, the skating ring. Uh -huh. And TJ would go and we'd get him on some. And it was quite cute to watch. Um, yeah. Because he held on to the bar and the wall a lot. <laughs> Look, I'm a very, I like to think I'm a very athletic, coordinated young man. Um, but when it comes to roller skating, it's so difficult for me. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the fear of, of, I don't know, but it is something I want to do more. I, I always envy the people that can go backwards and just look so clean. We should My do brother that. was the best. He would do back flips, really? front flips. Did oh, he yeah. have roller skates? Yeah, he owned a pair probably up until he was oh, in wow. his 40s. That's cool. Yeah, he was that guy skating around, doing these tricks. Yeah, cool. I, I'd want to do that at some point. Um, maybe when I'm 50, something I can learn. I'm not afraid of it. I'll score. Um, Alo Alosin says, our family has a new addition. My daughter Maddie is pregnant due in April. Oh, that's so sweet. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's, that's amazing. Simone with the World Cup update. Argentina is now scored a second goal. So nice. they are up 2-0 against Poland. Um, oh, here we go. And with the updates, Poland 0, Argentina 2, Saudi 0, Mexico 2. Wow. Okay. Thank you for those updates, guys, because normally um, I'm watching it now. It's uh, very relaxing, actually. The World Cup is, right? Yeah, I love it. Nella was 18, by the way. You asked how. Okay. What, what was Nella's question? What were we talking to Nella about? Mm. But I remember you said, how old is Nella? Nella, what was your question? Hold on. I feel like I may have have, have it here. I don't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right here there. it is. She said, I just wanted to say you filled my life with so much love. Oh, sweet. Learning from us. Okay. At 18. I like that. I wonder where you're from. 
No, oh, another like question. Means. Now we're going to, yeah. okay, well, we'll look out for that one. Um, and Nat with the super chat says, hi, TJ and Franny J. Happy birthday, blessings. Jojo, wish you many more blessed, beautiful, brilliant years. Enjoying all your wonderful oh, achievements. Thank you for that. That's so sweet. Um, That's very sweet. We have about a couple more minutes before we have to get going. We answered this one. Um, Annie, Anna Lee wants to know if you have a favorite Christmas um, movie, Francis. Mm, she's from Sweden. Mm -hmm. I want to go there, by the way. Mine would be um, Home Alone. I think so, too. That's the only one I really know is Home Alone. Um, and then Anne Van Galar wants to know, can, can they ask you something? Sure. Okay, <laughs> did that one. Domingo says, I recommend on Netflix, Parches the Documentary, the story of a very famous Spanish musical group. They made seven movies, 17 albums, and international tours in many countries, and, and he recommends it. I will have to see, Domingo. Very cool. Um, and then... I like documentaries. I love them. Can you read this one, Francis? Sure. Thank Grandma you, number 15. The rule I had for my kids was no tattoos until you're 18. Now with three boys and three girls all grown, my daughters have multiple tattoos and my boys don't have any. Hmm. That seems like it has switched. Because hmm. normally back then, like when I was growing up, the boys had them, but the girls really didn't. The boys have them, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so wait, you're saying girls have them now? Yeah, yeah. her daughters. Yeah. Her, she has three boys and three girls, yeah. and the daughters have them multiple, and the boys don't. Wanda got her tattoo when I was twenty-two. When she was twenty-two, okay. um, look, I, I think tattoos are—they're getting more and more popular, right? Yeah. Are they hit a peak? What would you say? I think, like five years ago, it was the the thing to do. Hmm. Right. Okay. Uh, I know we're, we, we've been doing this lately. I hope it, does it confuse you guys when we're doing topic to topic? I hope it doesn't. Uh, amen, Franny. I was this young single mom too. I was very picky. And if they didn't like my daughter. Bye-bye. Adios. Peace. Deuces. <laughs> Adios. You say it with such happiness, Hasta Francis. luego. Is there any more? <laughs> um, Vete a la. No, you don't want to say that. <laughs> uh, Jewel says, I'm a grandmother wanting to find a husband. Thoughts? Oh, I think Jewel, you. Do you, girl? What What does I that would, mean? Okay, so if I was in this situation, I would. I think about this sometimes. Like, where do you find one? Not that, like, yeah, in my not, situation, you can't just go to a store and find. No, us. but like, you know, do you go to church? Mm -hmm. You go do it at a bookstore. You want it somewhere where it's like respectable. And can I can I say something? Yeah. If I was a female, I would a hundred percent agree with that. But I felt that was too. Um, to like not manipulate that's that's the wrong word but, but to planning no. shouldn't it be like free okay of course but it's that but you know you got to put yourself in the right situation yeah and i do feel like look you have standards right and i'm not saying to be so picky that's not what i'm saying at all but i feel like you should be able to get what you want right this should be a person that you enjoy spending your time with and what do you like to do that, that's what I would do. If I like to, I don't know, you know, go to church or go to bookstores or something like that. That's where I would try to meet my significant other. It makes sense. It makes sense. That's what I would try to do. Um, so what would you say? I don't know about the dating apps because I've heard great stories. And then I've heard stories that they're like, oh, no, I'm never doing that again. Mm. But I've mm. also heard of, oh, my gosh, I met my soulmate, you know. So it just depends on the person. Like, let's say, like, what is your religion? I would try to join a site like that. Hmm. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think. Like, I, there's a ChristianMingle.com or something like that. How do you know all this, Francis? Because I'd be seeing it. I see Francis has a <laughs> Christian Mingle account. Um, do it's Latin means God. Thank you, Anne. Okay. Uh, I'm so sorry it, we're so late. Um, Carrie says, I think I've seen Sapiens in a bookstore before. Yeah, it's. It's a pretty popular book. It right? is. It is. Um, Nakia with the super chat says, "Hello, TJ. I'm a music teacher, and I use you and your great uncle as a as great tenor. As a great tenor. Yep. Any advice for my tenors on how to combat fear of high notes? Ooh, oh, that's a good one. Um, it's interesting you say this because lately, when I've been recording, I kind of went to uh, a head voice." Um, or easier. And I know in, in choir, you're supposed to um, 
not just flip and and you know when you're singing by yourself you can kind of color things different ways um in a choir it's completely different um no real advice obviously just making sure they're warming up which i'm sure you're doing um i sometimes will put myself where i like stand tall and try to this is so odd to say but i try to look at as i'm coming down on the note um that seems to work sometimes with me um the one thing you can't do is have the mentality that this is so high, I can't do this. You have to have some confidence in yourself. Like, go for it. You have to go for it. And it's tough, but I honestly think warming and vocal exercise is the only true way to to um, establish um, things that are going to help you continuously hit those high notes. So like everything, um, you got to exercise and, and stretch your ability. That's the only true advice I could give um for that unless you're gonna like i said flip into head voice or something like that but i love it nikki i would love to hear what you guys are doing and what you're making um oh my goodness it's already one o'clock all right there's a couple more super chats so i just want to make sure i didn't lose any um but yes nikki let us know i would love to send me a, a picture or a link of you guys singing i would love to hear it that's cool um francis before we get to can you read this honey yeah K Scorpio, I'm in my 40s and sometimes I get embarrassed by things I should know. I soak up knowledge like a sponge from elders. See, I think that's great. And, and I don't think you're you're not doing anything wrong as long as you're willing to learn. My thoughts on this is simple. Um, there's nothing you should know. Don't ever feel embarrassed. Yeah. I've learned that I, in doing these lives. I mean, even with the homo do, I don't even know how to pronounce it. It is what it is. I don't yeah. know. You know, Um and, and that's okay. When you get to a place where you're comfortable not knowing, it makes everything so much easier and And, and being better. able to like, you know, not laugh at yourself, but just be able to learn and say, okay, I didn't know that. It humbleizes you. Yeah. It's all good. Um, okay. So now I think we're good. We could do, ooh, do a background check. Would you do a background check on a significant other? Ooh, I probably would do some trolling. Ooh. Well, now with I would definitely, if I was Google. meeting, yeah, because I think so about that, like we how many people are Googling, like, Is that a thing? That's I be think a thing. people do that for sure. It's, it makes sense. I think if you're a new person or a new client or something, people are like typing your name in and seeing what comes it makes, up. It makes complete sense. It's easier to do now. I would do it a hundred percent. Um, Here we go. Janai says with a super chat, just hey, want to, you just want to let you all know that we are here in Kona, Hawaii. Is safe for now from our volcano that has erupted. Ooh, much love to you all. And Janai. much love back to you. I've been watching this on the news. I, I didn't even know about this. And, you know, what I'm told is it's pretty far away from, you know, the civilization. Like, you have, I guess you have weeks to prepare. I could be wrong, Janai. Maybe it's grown a little more. But, um, yeah, I did see that on the news the last couple of days. I think it it happened maybe three or four days ago. But so yeah. everyone's okay though. Yeah, but I think the the main problem too is the gases in the air oh, from no. the eruption. Yeah. Okay. Well, Janai, beautiful place, such a beautiful place. Hawaii. We were just yeah. talking about that. So beautiful. Um, Janai, I hope everything is safe and it calms down. Um, I did not know about this volcano. Not 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 cool. But I guess it's it's natural. Um, Andy with the super chat says, TJ, the Christmas music, the Christmas music is beautiful. Love you too. Oh, we love you too. Andy, Andy. I'm happy you enjoy it. I really am. It's, it's always, you know, I, like I've said before, I never thought I would do Christmas music, a Christmas album, but there's something about it. Even taking the girls to school, it was on my iPod. So it just connected to the car. Um, and it was have yourself a Merry Christmas, my version of it. And it made me smile because it's cold outside. It's very um, seasonal and, and it just feels good. So I enjoy that feeling. I enjoy helping get others get to that feeling. And like I said, I will always um, try to do music that you guys want. And as long as you guys are liking the Christmas stuff, I'll, I'll do some more of it. It's fun. It's a beautiful time of the year. It's fun. And, and it is. Um, it's cool. I like it. Franny J, anything else before we go? I don't this think was a good, so. but I, I do think we may do a live on Sunday, like you said, because he goes out of town for 
okay. sometime. So maybe Sunday. Yeah, I don't think we're going to have a, a vlog up anyway. So we'll, we'll do a family live for Christmas. By then we'll have our Christmas tree and everything will be decorated. Should we be in onesies or something? My you better get on Amazon, Franny. <laughs> all right. We are signing off, you guys. Thank you all Bye, so guys. much for love being you here. We love you guys. And let me fix the screen. <laughs> and adios, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.